All right. Hey, where's my chalk? Okay. Oh yeah, I did a lesson over here. Hey, okay. right, did you guys do it, or are you guys just gonna wait till the day before? <laughs> Ignacio, did you do it? <laughs> you guys are playing with fire. <laughs> the the fire's been before. burning since the world began. Like bet. Uh huh. Okay, we're going to do this just so we can get it on video too. Okay, it says convert the polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, and the easiest way to do that is to use the formulas, right? X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta, right? So you're given 4, 210 degrees. So the X coordinate is going to be 4 times cosine 210 y equals 4 sine 210. And then, of course, now you just got to know your trig values. What is cosine 210? Lee, um, read it off your paper. Wait, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, here's the unit circle. There's 210 right there. Look, you make the triangle. Look, the x coordinate is big, the y coordinate is small. Negative root 3 over 2, and sine of 210 is the y coordinate small. Garcia. <coughs> uh, one half minus one half. And that simplifies to negative 2 root 3, negative 2. So write your answer like this negative 2 root 3, negative 2. Okay, and then the next one is, what does it say? Negative 3 pi over 2. Negative 3 pi over 2. So, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And this is a quadrantal angle. Can, you can't get easier than this. Cosine pi over 2, Arita. Half. Negative 2 over 2. Pi over 2 is right here, man. Oh, what? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Kim, what? sine pi over 2. What? What? <laughs> so, 0, negative 3. OK, and then number 2, convert the rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. And what's the fastest way? Draw the picture. You draw the picture, you cannot go wrong. So. What does it say? Negative 2, 2. So if you plot the point negative 2, 2, we'll go 2 left and 2 up, like that. 2 left and 2 up, how far from Oregon are you? Uh, sure. 2 root 2, because that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? So if this is 45 degrees, then what's the, what's the degree measure going like that? 135 degrees. So there you go. I'm not going to write it down. It's called 2 root 2, 135 degrees. Or if you want to give me radians 3 pi over 4, it doesn't matter to me. That's correct as well. B, 3 root 3, negative 3. Okay, plot <coughs> the point. Draw the picture. If I go 3 root 3 to the right and 3 down, how far from Oregon am I? No, how can the distance be negative? Or 6. 6. And what angle is that? 30. 30 degrees, right? That's the smaller angle. So what would be the one going all the way around like that? 330. 330. So you can go 6, 330 degrees. Or you could just go, can't they just go clockwise and go negative 30 degrees? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I'll take, I'll accept either. Because they're both correct. Remember, there's an infinite number of ways of, of labeling points using the polar coordinate system. All right, and then, see, we almost finished with the homework already. Hey, this is just like the last quiz. Write the rectangular equation of the following curves. R equal 3. This was the last quiz, I think. So what do you do? Square both sides. So you get R squared equals 9. You know what? Let me write down the formulas so that you can see them. So what do you need to know? R squared equals x squared plus y squared. Anyway, 
all of these formulas are derived from the picture, right? Like in the rectangular coordinate system, this is x and this is y, this is r and this is theta. So they're all derived from that picture right there. Tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. X equals, we just did it, R cosine theta. Y equals R sine theta. These are the formulas you gotta know. Mr. Park, can we just skip number three? Oh yeah, okay, we'll come back to that. So square both sides and go. A, hey, use somebody right there. X squared plus Y squared equal nine. And of course, that's just a circle, right, with radius three. And look, you don't even have to graph it. Remember on the quiz, you had to graph it? <coughs> you don't have to graph it here. You just got to write the equation. So no graphing. Oh, let's go to number three. Okay, how many people actually got number three? Did you get it on your own? Did you look at my solution? Very good. What about the rest of you? Jamelo? Galaccio? And... I just, I just looked at how you drew the picture and I did the rest. And then you could figure it out. Yeah. Okay, now this problem is on the test now, so it's not like this, it might be there. It is going to be there. Just change the numbers. Though. So number three, find the distance. Well, this is just like rectangular coordinate system, right, when you're in Algebra 1. Once you learn how to plot points, then your teacher asks you how to find the distance. Mm -hmm. And then you draw a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem, right? That's how the, that's how the <coughs> distance formula is derived. So same thing here, 5 comma 10 degrees, and what's the other one? 3 comma 130 degrees. So what you should do is draw up a picture. So measure off a 10 degree angle, that's kind of small, yeah? And then you go 5 units from the origin. So that's 5 units from the origin making a 10 degree angle. Like that. Then you measure off a 130 degree angle, and you go 3 units. So 130 degrees would be 90 plus 40 about so be something like that, and you measure off three. So how do you find the distance right there between the two points? Maybe I'll call it C. Yeah, law of cosines. If you know two sides and the included angle, then you can figure out this side <coughs> using the law of cosines. Because look, if this angle is 10 degrees, and that angle there is 130 degrees, then what's that one right there? Yeah, you just subtract 130 minus 10, 100, so that's 120 degrees. So anytime you have to find the distance between two polar points, you're going to use the law of cosines. So you guys even remember the formula? C squared equals here. If you want to call this one A and you want to call that one B, if that makes it easier. A squared plus B squared. And you guys remember. I'm proud of you. C squared equals... 3 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 3 times 5 times the cosine of 120 degrees. And do we know what cosine of 120 degrees is? Yeah, that's a number we know. Who's next? Demelo? Uh, negative half. So if you compute these numbers, what do you get? 9 plus 25 is 34. Minus, oh, except will be plus, the 2 and the half cancels out, and so you get 15. So that's 49. Therefore, C is? See how I make the problem come out nice? It's beautiful, yeah. Or would you rather see something ugly? Okay, moving on with number 4. These are all from the quiz, people. Theta equals pi over 3. What do I do to write the equation? Tangent both sides because tangent theta we have a formula for you. So, because I remember on the quiz some people missed this. I, th I think on the quiz it was pi over four, pi over three. Now. Okay, so tangent theta. Hey, you somebody? That's this thing. Y over x. Tangent of pi over three is a number I know. Galaccio. Root three. Root three. I multiply both sides by x. So y equal root three x. So that's simply a line, right? A line that goes to the origin, and the slope is radical 3. C. Oh, gosh, I can't even see. R equal negative 2 secant theta. OK, now secant theta is 1 over cosine. So this is the same thing as negative 2 over cosine. So what can I do so that I can use these formulas here? 
Okay, multiply both sides by cosine. So R cosine theta equals negative 2. And A, you sub-bud it. That's X. X equals negative 2. And of course, that's a vertical line. Yeah? So you don't even have to graph. You just got to come up with that equation. <laughs> D, R equals 6 sine theta. Okay. Now, of course, if you want to, you can, you can like, it's not cheating. It's just like, bend the rules a bit. Because isn't this a graph you're supposed to know? This is one of the graphs we learned, right? What is the graph going to be? When it looks like that. Oh, boy. It's a circle. <coughs> and what is the significance of that number, remember? It's flat. That's the diameter. And remember, the cosine ones are here and there, right? If that number's positive here, that number negative there. But this is a sine one, so it's either going to be up or down here. But since it's positive, it'll be up here, right? Mm -hmm. So since the diameter is 6, you just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. And then what's the center of the circle then? 0, comma, three. negative, oh yeah, zero, 3. So what's the equation of the circle? x minus 0 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to, and since the radius is 3, what number do I put there? Nine. So you can kind of bend the rules a little bit by just drawing the graph first and then writing the equation. Remember, I, I told you guys this when we went over the quiz too. Or you can just do it the conventional way. What can I do to both sides of this equation so that I can start using these formulas here? What can we do? Uh, Multiply both sides by r. So you get r squared and then 6r sine theta because a you somebody and a you somebody right r sine theta is y and then the, that's a rectangular equation and how do you find the center and the radius of the circle you have to put it in standard form so you got to complete the square so let's go down here so there's only one x term put all the y terms together like this leave a space and then leave the number on that side what do I have to add to make the perfect square? You take half of that number and square it. So make sure you add 9. Oh, by the way, there was a mistake on the answers. But somebody already found it yesterday, so they got the bonus point. x squared. That's because I, I remember, because that's because when I was rushing, I forgot to add the number on this side. y minus 3 quantity squared equals 9. It hey, is the same thing. Right? Next. D. We just did D. Oh, so we just got two more and we're done? Oh, this is the, oh, now they get tough. This is the one that comes up. You get the hyperbola or the ellipse of the parabola, but don't worry, I'm not going to make you graph. Just, just write the equation and I'll be happy. 2 minus cosine theta. Now, you, you actually had to do this on the book homework, so you guys remember what you did? What's the first step? Cross multiply. R times this equals 6 times 1, right? So R times this is 2R minus R cosine theta equals 6. If you somebody, that's X. But since you still have the R here, you want to isolate it. So leave this on that side, move the X on that side. So 2R equals X plus 6. Now. You want to get r squared because you have a formula for it right here. So how can I get r squared right here? You square both sides. So 4r squared, don't forget to square that 2 now, equals, and then if you FOIL this, you get x squared plus 12x plus 9. In fact, isn't this the one that had the mistake? Except it's not 9, it's 36. We almost made another mistake. Okay, and then of course r squared is x squared plus y squared. So if you distributize the 4, you get 4x squared plus 4y squared is equal to x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now, if you get that far on the test, how much are you going to get if this problem was 5 points? How much would I give you? You're not going to get all because you've got to put it in a form that you know how to, that you understand because some of you don't know that this is an ellipse. Just one? No. Two, you didn't get two out of five or three out of five. What say you? Three out of five. Okay, two out of five there. Okay. So complete we need to complete the square. 
So put all the x's together. So if you bring this on this side, you get 3x squared. Subtract 12x. Then you put the y there. Leave the number on that side. Now look at the x number. Look at the x terms. What can I factor out? 3. So if I factor out a 3, you get x squared minus 4x, leave a space, plus 4y squared equal 36. What do I add right there to make a perfect square? 4. But what did I actually add? 3 times 4. So you got to add 12. This is the mistake. I forgot to add the 12 there. So this is what you got now. 3x minus 2 squared plus 4y squared equals 36 plus 12 is 48. Now, one more step and we're done. What number do you need here to put it into standard form? 1. 1. So how do I make that 1? Subtract 47 from both sides. Divide both sides yeah. by 48. Divide everything by 48. Like that. Okay, so 3 goes into 48 16 times. See how I made my problem come out nice? Where's the book one was so ugly? 4 goes into 48 12 times. And now you know it's an ellipse. Because that's a plus sign. Yeah. And you don't have to graph it. Or you want to graph it. No. I can change the test. That's what? I have to teach her. Okay, last problem when we're done. What is this f? r equals secant theta. Okay, now, see how these two ones here, they're kind of tough, yeah? Now, secant theta is like 1 over cosine, right? Mm -hmm. And tangent is sine over cosine. No, we don't want to even change it to sine over cosine. You know what? You just want to change it. Because the tangent theta we got, it's in the formula already. So just change it, secant into 1 over cosine, bring cosine over. Yeah. Then you get x. So, exactly. Bring this cosine on this side. So multiply both sides by cosine, and you get r cosine theta equal tangent. And then both of them, a, you sub it. And then, a, you sub it. That's y over x. So if you multiply both sides by x, you get y equal x squared. And everybody knows this graph, right? Ignacio? Parabola. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> It's your basic, everyday parabola opening upward like that. Yeah, but you don't even have to graph. Just come up with the equation. So I don't know. Maybe for some of you, this, this might be the hardest problem on the whole test. OK, so tonight's homework is just number five only. I thought we were going to have homework tonight. No, remember that I changed it? I broke it up into these little pieces. Well, look, number five is just a graph. Look, you just got to do how many graphs? Three, four, five, One, six, two, five. three, four, five, six, seven measly graphs. <laughs> and look at these circles. It's so fast to graph circles. Come on. <laughs> this is like an insult to your loins right here. Okay, we're done for today. So that means you have 30 minutes remaining. So for those of you who didn't start, maybe you guys should start. No, I'm going to watch cartoons. <laughs> hey, this test is going to come up faster than you think, you know. What are you guys thinking? Yeah, next Thursday. No worries, Mr. Barr. No worries. <laughs>